Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a good one. Today, I'm giving you guys episode two in our Steam Deck optimization series. Last week, we talked about FSR and upscaling technologies. So if you haven't watched that yet, hit pause, check the link at the top right. We talk about the secret sauce that's gonna unlock some extra frame rate for your Steam Deck and give you a much better gaming experience. So last week, we focused more on our frame rates. And this week, I wanted us to focus and optimize our gaming experience. When it comes to gaming experience, it typically boils down to two topics. Of course, the frame rate of our game, as well as how the game actually looks. With a given system, such as the Steam Deck, we have to somehow manage the frame rate and how the game actually feels, along with how the game actually looks. Of course, we have to be realistic of what our game is actually able to render to the screen, as well as the given system that that game's gonna run on. But I think if we set some basic guidelines for the system, as well as what we should expect from visual qualities, we should be able to come up with some settings that are optimal for five different games. So what games are we gonna be optimizing today? I posted a survey over to the community tab here on the channel, and you guys voted on your top five games that you wanted to see optimize on the deck. So with lots of games to test, let's get tuning. Number five. Despite its age, The Witcher 3 is one of the most anticipated games to play on your Steam Deck, and even in 2022, man, it looks phenomenal. This game should be enjoyable to play anywhere between 30 FPS and all the way to 60 FPS for this open world action RPG. Even if The Witcher 3 demands some serious graphics horsepower, I think that the Steam Deck is up to the challenge. For a performance baseline, I've tested each of the game's internal quality modes from low all the way to ultra. At low, we are already to a good start, hitting nearly 70 FPS in the foggy area in front of the first garrison in the game. Medium detail settings nearly hit 60 FPS, but 55 is a great starting point. As expected, engaging both high and ultra settings are just not realistic with the Steam Deck. Still, we could use some of those settings in our optimized setup. Next is render resolution. Unfortunately, we're limited to only 1152 by 720 as our minimum resolution, but we should still see some decent gains. This resolution engages Steam OS's FSR and we gain an additional 8 FPS at low detail. At medium, we get all the way up to 60 FPS. As for high and ultra mode, we do get a 10% bump, but that's just not enough to get us going. Knowing that our performance is well above our 30 FPS and 40 FPS threshold, I decided for optimized settings to increase our visual fidelity just a little bit. Referencing Digital Foundry's analysis of the PlayStation 4, I've increased the water and texture qualities beyond the medium setting, and that config only dropped four frames from our medium performance baseline. Having punched our settings in, let's ride Roach on our first horse ride of the game up until we meet the dreaded Griffin. First up is low quality settings. While serviceable, the geometry of the objects and the foliage and texture definition, it just looks really bad. Outside of the close-up scenes with Geralt, other characters and models like the stagecoach, they look a little bit meh. Now we've got our optimized settings with FSR engaged. The environment looks much more engaging and the cinematic seems comparable to a standard PC experience. If you are distracted by the shimmering of the foliage, going back to native 800p without FSR is still playable at a locked 40 FPS. Number four. Red Dead Redemption 2 over the past couple days finally got an update where they integrate AMD's FSR version 2.0 into the mix, so I've got to integrate that into my optimized setting for you guys. As with The Witcher 3, I've set my resolution to 800p and started with all of my settings set to medium. Though 42 FPS is a decent result from the built-in benchmark, it doesn't leave much wiggle room for higher settings. Dialing back our settings to low and yikes, we only buy an additional 6 FPS. This suggests we will have to shoot for 30 or 40 FPS as our performance target. Pulling the Xbox One X equivalent settings from Digital Foundry, we gain a couple of frames from the medium detail settings. However, I found that using the ultra texture quality setting crashes my game within the first few minutes of testing. So I dialed all the higher settings down to medium while lowering global illumination, grass, volumetrics, and various other quality settings to low or even off. These optimized settings get us 3 FPS above medium while retaining stability that the Xbox equivalent settings just don't provide. 
Now FSR. With the latest update, we can access AMD's latest version of FSR 2.0, enabling quality, balanced, and performance settings. Though it is a better implementation than GameScope's functionality, this game appears to be hitting a CPU bottleneck when running in the town. As we roll out of our camp with the optimized settings, we're hitting a steady 40 plus FPS and are capping out our GPU right around 95%. But as we enter the town, the CPU starts to ramp up and our frame rate begins to tank. But even when we turn down all the settings to low, we're effectively getting the same playable experience. Still, man, the quality of the scene is absolute garbage. The trees are blocky, the textures are bland, and the shadows just contrast way too much with their surroundings. There's just no comparison between the two, and the benefits that we get from lowering our quality settings, they just don't justify the quality impact. So I'll use the medium Xbox quality setting with FSR set to quality mode. So I'm going to be running this locked at 40 FPS with VSync turned on. Still, Red Dead Redemption 2's half rate VSync mode is reasonable for a guaranteed good looking 30 FPS experience. But that's for you to decide. Number three. Grand Theft Auto has been around for a long time, and this is yet another platform that we get to add to the list. Being nearly a decade old, GTA runs very well with even the most modest of quality settings. Dusting off the archives from Eurogamer, pulling in the console equivalent settings still runs at playable frame rates. But to push it a step further, I recommend using SteamOS's FSR set to 960 by 600. Put into action, the Steam Deck manages to maintain about 50 FPS during the built-in benchmark, and driving through the first mission in the game stays in the 50 to 60 FPS range. Given the utilization numbers that I'm seeing in playable frame rates above 40 FPS, I think GTA 5 is a great title that showcases how well a CPU limited game can play on the deck. Number two. As much as I like punching myself in the balls, no wonder you guys voted Elden Ring to come into the number two spot. The game is incredibly popular and it works reasonably well on the deck, but you cannot expect a 60 FPS experience. There are some caveats that we have to keep in mind with this game. From Software designed Elden Ring to run at a locked 60 FPS, so if you want to select refresh ranges between 40 and 60, your results could be hit or miss. And on top of that, the game is designed to run at 16x9 resolutions, so it's unfortunately going to have extremely large borders and bezels across the screen, and there's just no way around that at this point. For the baseline, I've tested the built-in low and medium quality settings, and again, yikes, 36 FPS at low and 35 at medium are not a great place to start. Even engaging SteamOS's FSR, we only managed to claw back 3 FPS, or about 10%. Clearly, this game is heavily CPU limited, and as I said last week, this is the most apparent flaw with the Steam Deck. So given we see minimal performance improvement with lower quality settings, there's just no reason to switch those modes. And as we scroll through the side-by-side -side video of me riding around Limgrave, the low settings add additional shimmering to the hero's model and vegetation around the environment, and it's just so hard to look past. So for recommended settings, I think 960 by 540 is the ideal resolution using straight medium or the settings I've got on the screen. From there, use the quick access menu to lock your FPS to 30 for a much more fluid experience. Before we get to number one, I want you guys to go down to the pinned comment in this video and respond to the survey, because as you can see with all the games we're playing today, each of them have their little quirks and tweaks that definitely could use a little bit more explanation. And if you like this video so far, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm really wanting to get past 5,000 subs and I gotta keep this channel growing and I can't do that without your help. Number one. We showed Horizon Zero Dawn in last week's video, so now it's time to finish the job and give you some optimized settings. I wanted to test our baseline's favor performance preset and the PS4 equivalent's original settings. For grins, I've also pulled in Digital Foundry's optimized settings from their 1.10 patch video. As expected, favor performance bodes well here, averaging nearly 60 FPS with the in-game FSR set to quality mode. At the same time, both the original and Alex's optimized settings net just above 40 FPS. 
if we opt for the native rendered experience, we lose about 13 to 15 percentage points compared to FSR. So we're either shooting for a 30 or 40 FPS experience here. So which is the best looking experience? Here we have Alloy training with her dad in the tall grass, and this scene explains it all. With FSR set to my previously recommended quality mode, notice the amount of shimmering across the grass. It looks almost as distracting as Red Dead Redemption 2's low quality settings. Though some may be able to look past this, I just don't think it balances out. If we go back to the native experience, the shimmer is gone. Still, as we saw with the performance charts, we might be unable to maintain a locked 40 FPS experience in the most stressful situations. So how about a compromise? Let's use original settings with FSR set to ultra quality. That's a 41% reduction in resolution with a significantly reduced amount of FSR artifacts. This translates into a locked 40 FPS experience in the prologue sequence of the game. If additional FPS is needed, you've got a couple options. You can always go and engage FSR in quality mode, though I wouldn't go to balanced or performance mode. And if you want to change settings for a brute force approach, favor performance will always work in a pinch, but it just doesn't look as good. Granted, it's way better than any of the other games low settings that we've seen today. And there you have it. Those are the five top games that the community wanted to see optimized for the Steam Deck. And how do you think we did? Did the games look better than you thought they were going to look? Or do you think the performance was a little bit underwhelming to say the least? Let me know down in the comments. Speaking of the comments, check out the pinned comment below and vote in the survey. If you guys want to see more optimization videos, definitely vote and let me know which games you want to see and give you guys what you're looking for. As always, you can follow me over at Twitter to get the best tech memes as well as the latest news with the handhelds because those are going to start shipping hopefully by the end of the month. As always, thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.